Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 14 of Vlogmas. For today's video, I'm going to do a full face of women-owned brands. There are so many amazing beauty brands owned by women now. There's definitely a lot of them that I left out because I only have one face, but I wanted to put like a face to their names. So I did some research on like how these women kind of got started became successful and um, started these brands. So I thought I'd share a little tidbit of each brand and the women behind them because it was really cool and truly inspiring to read about these women. So I got my little blazer on so I could be a little business lady too. <laughs> okay, let's get started. So I just got back from Sephora as well. So I grabbed a couple more things that I wanted to try um, and all of them were owned by women. So I'm gonna be using some new products here, some first impressions, um, things that I've never used before. So I'm gonna start with the Glow Screen from Supergoop. I've heard so many good things about this. Um, like people literally swearing by it, raving about it. So I'm going to try that for kind of like a primer, just like an under makeup sunscreen because you obviously want to wear sunscreen every single day. So I'm going to start with this. So I was under the impression that Supergoop was owned by Gwyneth Paltrow. Like I straight up thought that until looking it up today, but it's not. It's owned by Holly Sagard. I'm sorry if I butcher any of these names. I'm awful at names in the first place. But she actually started Super Goop because she wanted to provide um, like sunscreen and sun protection to public schools. When she was young, she had a friend that was diagnosed with melanoma. So that really like made an impact on her. And then she kind of found out that sun protection should start at like a really young age and that skin cancer can kind of start really young so she wanted to provide sunscreen to public schools but unfortunately it was actually um not allowed at public schools um there's a couple different reasons one it said that there wasn't enough funding for it so they basically like didn't have the funding to supply sunscreen to kids so it wasn't allowed the other reason that i saw was that sunscreen was classified as like an over-the-counter drug so they couldn't give it out to students as well so after that didn't work she pivoted and just basically wanted to provide some protection for people kind of change the game and change like people's thoughts about it she said that a lot of people thought that sunscreen was only like needed in the summer and in the warmer months so she kind of just wanted to change the view of it kind of shows you that she definitely hit some like hard spots had some failures but just pivoted it kept going and now it's a really huge brand and really really popular um but that's really pretty it's it smells like a little bit but less like sunscreen but in like a good beachy way not like a overbearing way there's zero white cast she's also mentioned she didn't want people to like look ghostly either <laughs> um so she made her sunscreen really like nice and sheer um yeah it's really pretty it just has like a little glow but it dries down completely it doesn't feel like sticky or thick just really pretty yeah that's definitely really really nice so no wonder people were raving about that <laughs> the next thing i want to use i mentioned before that i love this ilia little skin tint but this is way too dark for me. This is in Aura. So at Sephora today, I got a lighter shade so I could use it in the winter. So I just love this because it's nice and like glowy. And this also does have SPF of 42. So now I got like two SPFs of 40, but that's okay. Some protection. Um, I got it in formosa it's in four and this one's in six so about two shades lighter i went so i'm hoping that it's a lot better because i was really wanting to wear it but it was just always way too dark um now that i lost my tan like completely so yeah i'm gonna use that for my base little tint so Ilya is owned by sasha 
Klavsik. I'm so sorry if that's wrong. That's not how you pronounce it. But I guess she really has like a love for lipstick. And it was kind of like her thing. And from a young age, she always had this love for lipstick. And this little interesting like tidbit I read was that there's this thing called the lipstick effect that like during a recession and really hard economic times lipstick sales go up um because people can no longer afford really expensive luxuries to treat themselves or women buy a lipstick just so they can feel like that luxury without paying a huge price because you know lipsticks are usually pretty reasonably priced so i thought that was really interesting but she kind of mentioned that and i never knew that was ever a thing Ilya is actually named after her great grandfather and then she basically just really wanted to make organic um clean products her mom did a lot at home with like home remedies more natural organic remedies and so she kind of learned from her and wanted to make a brand that focused really on their organic products and organic ingredients Look how pretty that is. Look how glowy it is. Like one time I wore this and my dad even was like, wow, your skin looks really pretty. I was like, well, I mean, it's makeup, but, but thanks dad. That color is so much better than the other one. Thank God. But I'm so happy I have this back for winter now. The next thing I got today was the Kosas, Kosas, Kosas um, concealer. I got this in zero to w light with golden undertones i've been dying to use this i've heard really really good things specifically about their like face products so it's pretty light but i am so light right now so i'm hoping that it'll work so kosas is owned by sheena yatanes yatan i'm so sorry yatanese and she basically launched because she couldn't find lipstick that she thought was like comfortable and easy to wear and she couldn't find foundation that lasted all day so she started Kosas literally in her kitchen and her first order she sent out literally just from her kitchen counter so I thought that was really cool And her mom worked, um, I believe, for Clarins and Clinique, like at a beauty counter. So she always had exposure to beauty. So always felt like it was kind of like in her blood and knew that she wanted her own brand. This is really pretty. It's really glowy too. Look at all that glow I got so easy to blend out it might be like a little yellow that's my fault though a little yellow for my skin i think but it definitely covered up like my breakouts really nicely really pretty that is gorgeous like like new favorite concealer material definitely really creamy so it's like one of those that crease but i'm guessing because the ilia um skin tint is really really creamy as well um, so I'm definitely going to need powder. But, so them on top of each other is pretty like, like I'm getting pretty creasy. But I'd rather get that than dry. So I'm just going to need to powder, but really pretty start. I love when you use products and it's just like, they're just so good. And you're just like, yes. So if you saw my decluttering video, you'll see that I decluttered my NARS um, little contour stick. I've had that for so long. Like I said in that video, I don't think they even make it anymore. And I really like the application of a contour stick. So I decided to use the Fenty Beauty, the match stick. This one is in Mocha 03. Obviously Fenty is founded by Rihanna. We all know that. And obviously when you're a superstar, you kind of get the best treatment and use the best products you have like celebrity makeup artists always working on you um so she, on the website it says that she created fenty beauty because she wasn't finding everything she needed in in beauty after using the best of the best basically 
and she wasn't finding products that were suitable for all skin tones and types. So obviously she solved that problem real fast when she came up with 50 shades of her Pro Filter foundation. Wow! Look at that! That is a contour. <laughs> wow, that's very pretty. Obviously I love her just cream bronzer. So I knew this was going to be good. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Would you expect anything less from Rihanna though, really? And I'm using the Beauty Blender and I believe that this is also women owned, so. Oh my goodness. So pretty. And all of them together too, the glowiness, the just like looking like flawless, everything. So pretty. I haven't tried much from Rare Beauty, but I've always heard so many good things. So I finally grabbed one of their liquid blushes. This is the Soft Pinch Dewy Liquid Blush in Joy. I love um, her foundation brush, but I haven't used much else. I really want to use the found or try the foundation, the concealer, but you know, one product at a time. Obviously, Rare Beauty is created and owned by Selena Gomez and she really founded it on the premise of exactly what the name says rare being rare oh my god did I use that too much we'll see um your own rare beauty uniqueness embracing that she really wanted to like challenge the beauty standards okay I did too much <laughs> But it's still really pretty. <laughs> it's just pretty intense. But I think with powder and everything, it will blend, like it will kind of. I'll make I'll I'll help it along. Okay, it will be better. We'll fix it. But I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not as bad in person. Like in the camera, it's like, but in person, it's not as like crazy as it looks but it's really pretty it blended out so nicely hopefully it will start <laughs> I knew I put too much <laughs> look at my cheeks I swear in person it's not that bad okay that helped a little bit like I said, I think the powder is going to help a little bit. So next I have the Milk Makeup. This is a little highlighting stick. I've had it for a really long time. Um, I felt like the first time I used it, I wasn't like blown away or anything, but I kept it to still try it and play with it. Um, so Milk is actually owned by three women and one man. The names are Diana Ruth, Georgie Greville, and Zana Roberts Rossi. Rossi? Rossi? And then the man's name is Mazdak Rossi. It was started in like a hub called Milk Studios. And it's like this place in New York City that the male owner owns and created. And it's basically like a hub for fashion, beauty, I guess there, there's concerts there, there's runway shows there, there's um, magazine cover shoots there. Basically like a creative hub. Milk Makeup was created there. So basically they wanted to like capture kind of like the essence and the vibe and the feeling of the people there and the place itself and all that. So that's where Milk Makeup came out of. This is really pretty. I think it might be like the combination of all the glowiness. But that's a lot prettier than I remember. Yeah. So they definitely wanted to capture like the unique looks that people um, wear there. Like all the different beauty and fashion things going on there. And also just like the speed and ease of makeup. They wanted to make like multi-use products that are really fast and easy to use. So that's kind of how Milk started. But that's really pretty. I'm definitely going to be using that more often. 
Okay, let's powder this very shiny face. I'm just gonna take the Laura Mercier powder. We all know that Laura Mercier was founded by Laura Mercier. And she actually grew up in France, which I didn't know that. That's very cool. And she is a makeup artist. So she started Laura Mercier because she couldn't find like textures and formulas and colors that she wanted to use doing makeup. So she started like experimenting and basically like mixing her own things. She wanted people to like reach their full beauty potential, no matter like who you are, your skin tone, your skin type, all of that. And kind of like rare beauties kind of mission. She kind of says like what makes you unique is what makes you beautiful. And then she is known for her very like flawless complexion. So I repurchased the Brow Wiz. I always have loved this. It's my like most favorite brow pencil at, of all times. So I repurchased it because I haven't had it in a while. And I always get it in chocolate. I'm going to brush through my brows. So Anastasia was founded by Anastasia Soar. Sore? Soar? And she's originally from Romania. And she is the woman that basically started the whole eyebrow revolution. She's the one that created like bra eyebrow shaping. Just like the whole like filling in and focus on brows. It's definitely started by her. And she actually patented, I can barely say that word, um, the golden ratio eyebrow shaping method. And that's what she uses to shape the brows or like your face shape and to be like the most flattering. Her daughter works for her as well at the company. And then she actually does have a foundation as well. It's the Anastasia Brighter Horizon Foundation. And it actually supports young adults exiting like the foster care system. So I thought that was really cool that she definitely like gives back and has kind of a greater mission too. Truly the prettiest pencil. And then I'm just gonna do the clear brow gel. Set that all in. Make sure my hairs stay in place. So I kind of made a random purchase at Sephora today. I got the Huda Beauty Chocolate Brown Eyeshadow Palette. It's a little different for me because I usually don't wear too many dark colors on my eyes. And this is a pretty dark um, eyeshadow palette. But I just thought it was so pretty. It was so like deep and... I don't know, it has like those really pretty browns. See how pretty it is? It's like some purplies. I just thought it was so pretty. And I haven't bought myself like new eyeshadow in a while, I feel like. So um, I'm going to do my eyes with this today. But Huda Beauty is owned by Huda Catan or Catan. I'm so sorry. Um, but she actually originally like lived in Dubai. She had a job as a recruiter. Um, but during the recession, she actually got let go. And she said that getting fired from her job was the best thing that ever happened to her. And she said she was one of those employees that were like, like working weekends, always staying late, their first one there in the morning. So she was definitely like a hard worker. And her boss once like sat her down and was like, why, like, you don't belong here, you should be doing makeup. Um, so yeah, I felt like I really like resonated with that because I've had so many jobs that like, I know I don't belong there, <laughs> but I just keep pushing along because I'm too afraid of like what I actually want to do. Like it scared me too much. <laughs> so, so yeah, she got let go and she went to beauty school in LA. She moved back to Dubai. And she started her Huda Beauty blog. And that started getting a lot of followers. I'm using this shade right here. I don't know if they have shade names. I don't see shade names, but it's this one right here. And then she got 
a $6,000 loan from her sisters and they created false eyelashes and that was a huge success and she said it was obviously like a huge risk because it was she didn't have any like actual income from anything and she just had the six thousand dollars and launched and was hoping for the best basically but it all paid off and actually in forbes in 2020 she was named one of america's richest self-made women which is like so amazing i'm just gonna take that underneath the eye as well i'm gonna take a little bit of a smaller little blending brush from morphe and take this like darker ready ready tone and just put that more in the crease these are very pigmented and super easy to blend really pretty and the tones are just so different i feel like than what i have so i really like it Okay, I'm very curious what this one's gonna look like because it has, it's mostly like a bronze gold color but then it has like purple big chunks of shimmer. So I'm really curious what's it gonna, what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna take my finger and put it on the lid. A color I've literally never seen in my life in an eyeshadow, I don't think. And I almost put it back because I was just like, do I need a palette? Like, do I need another eyeshadow palette? Will I like these colors? Will they be too dark for me? But I'm so glad I just kept it. Because that is so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to use the Glossier Pro Tip Liner to just really closely line my lash line. And... Glossier was founded by Emily Weiss and she apparently was like an intern um, at Vogue for a while and she was in the show The Hills or she was like at least made an appearance I don't know if she was like I never watched The Hills so I wouldn't know I'm getting really hot so I'm gonna take that off and one day she came to her boss and said, I have this idea and I want to make this blog called Into the Gloss, which would feature like celebrities and kind of like the big names in beauty and fashion. And I want them to tell us, tell people like their tips and tricks with beauty. So like the real world beauty routines of like beauty insiders celebrities and she was like learning all of these tips when she was on shoots like interning and it seemed like she was basically like people need to know about these tips and i want to create a place where people can kind of share these tips and be heard and then you're kind of getting getting like the best of the best advice almost so her boss let her do it and she had like a, she brought in like a used like $700 camera apparently and um, bought the domain to intotheglass.com and that's kind of where it started and it, it took off and had a lot of followers. She had access to like a lot of people in the beauty industry because of it and then she really learned what kind of products people are wanting and needing that aren't already created so that helped her to create glossier and i always like to hear about like where people had like not failures but like downfalls because whenever i like make a mistake i literally beat myself up for it so much but it's nice to hear that people like got through their mistakes and created something really successful out of it so I guess she got like a dozen rejections for funding for Glossier but that didn't stop her I'm just gonna curl my lashes real quick I'm gonna use this little Milani duo this is the primer and this is the highly rated mascara Milani is owned by Lori Mink and she actually co-founded it with her uh, brother named Ralph 
and she wanted to make beauty products that were high quality but still at an affordable and attainable price which i feel like she nailed she was originally an art teacher always has been really interested in the arts and really creative it's a very like family oriented business and they focus a lot on quality which you can definitely tell i don't think i'm going to put it on my bottom lashes i think i'm just going to keep it on the top so lori says to not fear the things that you like don't know like the unknowing of things and the fear of things that are like yet to happen and to basically just to keep going and not be scared of things that you don't know yet and last but not least i got another fenty gloss balm cream i love my other one i have it in fenty glow i believe so i picked up another shade this is in honey waffles 03 and i'm hoping it'll go really good with this eye makeup kind of more orangey red tone. I love these so much. Yeah, it brings out the orange in the eyeshadow. Well, that is the finished look. I love everything that was new and that I tried for the first time. Very successful, like, first impressions of those. But I'd expect nothing less from these amazing women so i hope you learned a little something today i hope it was fun to learn the stories of some of your favorite women in the beauty community beauty industry i know it was really interesting to me i will link all of the articles that i read that i got this information from there's so much more information um about these women about their brands um so if you're interested at all i will link all those in the description box and link all these products as well Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely give me a like if you did. And subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.